Welcome again. If you're an ESS student getting ready for the exams, this video is made especially for you because it seeks to explain exactly how environmental systems and societies is examined not on a topic by topic basis but as a holistic study following a systems approach and at the heart of that systems approach is the concept of sustainability. In this discussion we examine the tropical rainforest to illustrate the systems approach, the holistic approach to ESS and the concept of sustainability. A tropical rainforest is a haven of biodiversity made up of a diversity of species, habitats and within each species great genetic diversity. The habitat itself is made up of the emergent layer, the canopy, the understory and the forest floor. This rainforest system is certainly a collection of parts with relationships between them, but the forest itself is part of a much bigger system, the global ecosystem. And the rainforest is also connected to human society, yet another system. Human society affects the rainforest and the rainforest affects society. Let's look at this very complicated diagram and try to simplify it to understand the holistic nature of environmental systems and societies. And if you're a student approaching the exams next week and you've studied your seven topics from number one systems and models to number seven environmental value systems, I want you to think about all of those topics and how they can be connected in this one diagram. And then we would move into a video lesson that would add some detail and pose some additional questions on TED-Ed. The rainforest, because it is exposed to certain abiotic factors like high levels of insulation, precipitation and the appropriate temperature, has a very very high level of productivity. From this high productivity, the result is a very thin soil because organic materials are very quickly depleted from the soil and taken up and stored in the biota of the rainforest, in the living components, in the large trees. And the soil of the rainforest is thin as a result. So because of these abiotic factors affecting the biota of the rainforest, we have had another effect on the soil, which is very thin. But the high productivity of the rainforest allows us to get many products like cocoa and coffee, timber, nuts, fruits, including pineapples, oranges, and bananas. And all of these products can be used to generate a natural income. And when we harvest these products and get the natural income in a manner that's not going to allow for the depletion of the rainforest, in other words, we take the interest out of nature and we leave the capital. And when we take this approach of living off nature's interest and not depleting the capital that nature provides us with, which is the rainforest itself, then such an approach is described as sustainability. But as we continue with our holistic evaluation of the rainforest, we realize that because of the thin soil of the rainforest, then when the forest is cleared for activities like cattle farming and for slash and burn agriculture or illegal logging, then it's very easy for the high precipitation that happens in the rainforest to quickly erode the thin soil. This soil erosion can then be connected to another topic of eutrophication, which in turn can then lead to further loss of natural capital as waterways lose their value and the income that they can generate is also lost. So here you can see a cascade, a domino effect 
from one issue into another and into another, beginning in the biota and then working its way into the human system, the environmental system experiencing changes which would ultimately lead to effects on society and society affecting the environment in turn. In addition to the soil degradation, the very act of deforestation and slash and burn and cattle farming all add carbon dioxide and methane to the atmosphere and these add to global climate change. In addition, the loss of rainforest also affects the hydrological cycle and not only are rainfall patterns in the forest affected but it is believed that global rainfall is affected as a result of this deforestation. The vast biodiversity of the rainforest is also a source of ecotourism, a great resource, a great piece of natural capital. And once ecotourism is practiced with care, this has the potential to generate immense amounts of natural income without depleting nature's natural capital. But issues like hunting and illegal trade in endangered species threaten the biodiversity of the rainforest. And laws are needed and enforcement of these laws are needed to reduce illegal hunting and illegal trade in endangered species. And non-governmental organizations can serve as watchdogs over governmental organizations who seek to put laws in place but often lack the power to enforce these laws. And a role for NGOs is to bring pressure upon governmental organizations to help with the enforcement of laws. Governmental organizations can also pass laws to reduce cattle farming, logging and slash and burn agriculture. In addition, governmental organizations have a role to play in overall education and poverty eradication. And so too do the NGOs, the non-governmental organizations. So what this diagram shows you is that environmental systems and societies is not to be studied as one topic at a time. But upon studying all topics, one must be able to make a series of connections among all topics. And here you can see all of your seven topics in the syllabus being connected. And when you look at the video and you do the questions, you will have the chance to make some more connections.